All right. Hold on. Let me wow. get this information together. It took long enough. Wow. Um, look at you, my brother. <laughs> How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm getting there. Okay. Let's get everybody all set up here. I want you to breathe in some of that good prana that I'm going to put out to the universe. And I want you to receive it. And I want you to apply it to your life as you choose to do so. Okay? Gavin. Mr. Walker, Gavin. All right, here we go, Mr. Gavin. Mr. Um, Lewis, tell me when you're um, ready. We've been on here, so um, all right, Kansas City, Kansas City. It's been a while. It's been a while. This is Mocha Myers, and as you guys know. I am breathing in that good prana and I'm putting it out to the universe and I want you guys to receive it. And it's been quite a while since I've been on the radio. Um, a lot of, of, the, of you guys that follow me know that um, it used to be the Kansas City scene. Um, now I am snapping you guys into some things that you probably don't know about. And so, therefore, I changed the name to the Kansas City Snap. And so, with that being said, I'm bringing out this new image of the company. And so, therefore, I am bringing to you Kansas City's own Gavin Roan. Gavin Roan, hey. how you doing? I'm imagining the claps right now. <laughs> 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 now, as you guys that don't have a special invitation to the Zoom, you can view this on Facebook KUAW, YouTube KUAW Radio, and Twitter KUAW. So um, let me go ahead and um, give this um, this interview because I just got so many questions. Gavin, you've been quite busy. This yeah, Thanksgiving yeah, time, I stay, I stay pretty busy. I'm I'm here at the I'm here at the studio now, and you know, uh, just just looking forward to uh, creating some new magic tonight. But yeah, I stay pretty busy myself. Got to stay busy out here, you know. Yes, absolutely. Now you were handpicked by Charlie Wilson. You know, I was reading a little bit of 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 your amazing story, and I must say that that you are truly amazing and. And you were raised up in the church. What church were you raised up in here? I went to Faith Deliverance Church of God in Christ in Kansas City, Kansas, off of 8th and Lafayette. Oh, yep. okay, okay. And so yeah. <laughs> so that's where it all began. That's where all the magic began, huh? Yep, that's and, where it all started. And so what inspired you to, like, just take it further? What made you want to say hey this is what i'm gonna do well what made it what made me take it further was uh i was um huh, I, I was recording demos at my friend's house and uh i i i would record and then i would i would give my music out to my friends you know on the weekends mm -hmm. and, and then eventually every weekend they started anticipating a new record yes so i started kept handing my records out. I kept handing my records out to people. And yeah, what's up? <laughs> I want a radio interview. <laughs> let me let me connect with you in a sec. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll be there. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, so yeah, so 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 I started handing my records out and, and, and every weekend people would anticipate a new song. Oh. So so then so so then eventually my records started to circulate out here to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And then and then before you knew it, 
I got a phone call from Babyface, and he moved me to Los Angeles. Yes, I was reading about that. God, I love Babyface. And then it was just so amazing for him to just drop that, you know, that dime to Charlie Wilson. How did that make you feel to be, you know, in a position to fill those type of shoes? Because the gap in is big. That's before you and I both were born. So how did that yeah. make you feel when... I mean, just meeting him and just all that, being in his presence and everything. It was it was it was an awesome position. I mean, so 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 the way I got that call was 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 really interesting. Uh, I was doing I was I did a show uh, in a place called r and Live here in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and uh, I I reluctantly did it because I I really uh, they called me at the last minute. Uh, the show was actually going on, and they called me out of nowhere and said, "Gab, can you please come by here?" And just jump on stage and just give us something, please. We got we got Tyrese here. We got uh, we got Neo here. We got a few few people in, in the building. Brandy's here, but we want you to close out the show. Can you please come by? And I was like, man, I really don't feel like it. I'm I'm in bed in my PJs. I, mm -hmm. I really don't feel like feel like getting up to do this. They said, Gab, please, can you come by and just sing one song, just one song? <laughs> so I jumped up. I got out of bed. I uh, valeted the car, and they rushed me in. I jumped, went from the car to the stage, reluctantly. You know how we are about our sleep. So right. I got on stage and I I just slayed the, I just said, you know, since y'all got me out here, I'm going to just Let act, me just act kill it. Can I just, <laughs> can I just act a fool for y'all one time? <laughs> so I climbed on top of the speakers. I'm just going crazy. The band is going crazy. And I'm singing End of the Road by Boys to Men. When I oh, get yes. off stage... I go backstage, and so this is one of those kind of places in Hollywood where there's it's star studded. Like everybody's in the audience, boys to men, everybody you could possibly imagine is yes. there. So, and it's every weekend. It's a hangout spot every weekend. Mm -hmm. So, ironically, Bobby Brown was there. Oh. So, Bo Bobby Brown met me backstage, and he said, "Kid," he said, "Man, uh, I have not cried over any singer." <laughs> since my late since my late wife passed away he said man you are undeniably and we took a picture yeah. if you look on my facebook page you'll see a picture of me and bobby brown yeah. and crying on my shoulder yeah i saw it's, that it's, it's, yeah it's amazing and and so standing next to him was another gentleman and he said man i don't know when i don't know how but i'm going to work with you somehow some way 5 years later that gentleman that said that was uh was Ronnie Wilson's nephew, Charlie hmm. Wilson's nephew, and he he asked me, he contacted me, found me on on uh, face on YouTube, contacted me on YouTube and said, hey man, we need somebody to fill Charlie's slots slot in the Gap Band, and there you have it. That's how I got in the Gap Band. Charlie Wilson's nephew. Uh, wow. Charlie Wilson's nephew. yeah yeah. So you know those are big shoes to fill, Gavin. Yeah yeah, and so. Ronnie Wilson, Ronnie Wilson had the end, had the, uh, had the final say, and, and I sang for him. I sang 30 seconds for him. And he was like, undeniable. He was like, nobody, he was like, Charlie's going to flip his wig when he finds out that we found somebody to do this. And then of course, later on, I, I ended up meeting Charlie and Charlie gave me his blessings and said, man, you're, you're undeniable. He said, I wouldn't have nobody else do this, but you. Right. So, and then ironically, me and Charlie's delivery is kind of relative. We right. kind of perform the same. We kind of sing the same. We both got range. We both come from the church. We both know how to riff and run and all that good stuff. So we kind of remind people of each other a bit. So it was it was kind of like a hand in glove match, you know. Oh, he was kind of looking at himself, his younger self, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. I was um, also reading about you and I see that you you're also on the um, HBO Soul Food series. Now, how, <laughs> it, how did you go from the Gap Band grooving to Soul Food? So, yeah, Soul Food. So, so uh, it's a record that I did uh, in my group, uh, Third Story. Uh, we did a record called I'm Sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tracy Edmonds, uh, my group uh, was signed to Tracy Edmonds for for some years. About 10 years we were signed to Tracy Edmonds at Babyface. Is that, they, the, they is that the group that you started out with, the young group, before you actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we was, what was the name of the group again? Third Story. Yes, Third Story. Yeah, 
yeah, third story. Then we changed our name to Chapter Four. So mm -hmm. yeah, once we signed our deal with with J Records with Clive Davis. So, but yeah, they that that song uh, is a song called "I'm Sorry" that we did with Jay Moss that circulated, but that was also on the Rush Hour Rush Hour Two soundtrack. But that record is still breathing today. It still gets crazy spins on radio. Still gets crazy spins on YouTube, and is the the, the numbers are enormous. And you know, it, it I I look I I look it up on Instagram. People are still reposting this. One of the most prominent records we ever did. So, Jay Moss was a monster on that thing. And you know, shout out to Jay Moss. And you know, that is amazing when you can do something like that and it just keeps going and going and going. And you yeah. know, and people just keep sharing it and it's all over the world. Yeah. And um, I see that, um, you know, I mean, it's the Christmas season. I see you got Drummer Boy out. It sounds amazing. I've been, uh -huh. I've been helping promote it. And when it, uh -huh. so what made you, you know, Want to say, hey, let me just give them a little bit of some of me on for the Christmas holiday. Well, you know what? <laughs> well, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually officially put the record out in about a, in about five days. I'm gonna officially put the record out. It's gonna be on all digital platforms. You're gonna be able to go go get it. Uh, I wanted to do, you know, it was just one of those things where everybody was just really asking me for a Christmas record. Every, it was just, it was almost like a memo went out and I didn't know anything about it. And everybody was like, so you're going to do a Christmas record now? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I was like, what is it? What is it about the Christmas thing? So, so then I started kind of combing through all the Christmas records and that was out, like all the Christmas carols that was out. And I was like, you know what? Drummer boy sounds like something I would do, you know what I'm saying? You know? yeah. So I was like, let me, let, me go let me go ahead and and then not only that, but like like when I when I you know when it comes to remakes and whatnot, I like to hear myself in it. So I was listening to Drummer Boy, the, the original, and instantly I was able to recite exactly how it would go production wise, you know, just my delivery, every single thing that that I did on it, I knew how I was gonna flip it. And the in the response. The response just from the look from the leak is 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 phenomenal, you know. So, but once it, I think once it drops, we're going to get a phenomenal response once I officially release it. So, when you do sing and you do deliver, what are you? What's the message that you're actually trying to deliver to the people <laughs> when you're speaking on deliver? Like, like on the Drummer Boy record. The drummer boy, any of the any of the records. What's your actual delivery? When people see you as an individual, and when we see Gavin Rones from Kansas City, what are you delivering? What is you know Gavin what? delivering? Uh, like, like, like one thing I want to get, like one thing I'm trying to convey. I'm trying to get back to the world is I want people, especially especially in the black community, I want us to know that it's cool to be in love again. Like I feel like back in like back in the back in the day, like before I was born, before you was born, like like they were singing. It was cool to be in love. It yeah. was cool to, to to be vulnerable with a girl, and she be vulnerable with you, and you can you 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 talking that talk, and you walk in the walk. You know what I mean? It was just yeah. it was fly to open the door to pull up with the flowers and the, the you know what I mean? It, yeah. it was like like and 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 I feel like nowadays. You know, it's gotten to almost animalistic now. It's almost mm -hmm. like we in the jungle. We don't even have emotions anymore. I We're agree. just predators. Like it's it's like it's like I wanna I wanna just my thing is I wanna let people know it's cool to actually love somebody. It's cool because you know what? After you finish playing the playing the field and after you finish having your fun, guess what? You're gonna need somebody solid. That is true. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna need somebody solid after you finish having fun. I've seen a lot of people die, older people die alone. Alone. All the money in the world, they they had too much fun, and then by the time it was, they wanted to settle down, they was too old. You know and, what I'm saying? And you right, and, and you and, right. And, and, and they 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 waited too late. I'm talking about seventies and eighties. You know what I mean? Just having, just you know. So I, I'm my my thing is I'm trying to let people know, yo man. Let's get back to the love. Let's get back to actually. I think these. I think the ladies nowadays. They, you know, a lot of them are lowering their standards because they just feel like, you know, well, what am I supposed to do if I don't lower my standards? I'm gonna just be alone, you know. So, you know, so I feel like I feel like, you know, if we can all get back to the love, everybody be happy. 
both sides. You know, a lot of people, they don't know their worth. And when you don't know your worth, then you have a problem with love. And sometimes right. people don't know the definition of love as right. well. You know? Right, right. So, um, I mean, and, and when you're speaking of that old school love, you know, you know, can I take you out on a date? Can I court yeah. you? Can I court you first? Yeah. You know, and uh, that's what a lot of that music that we grew up on that our parents used to, you know, play all the time. That's, you know, what that was about. So here we are, you know, we know, yeah. we know what we want, but it's this, you know, this, this younger generation, it's all about, you know, let me take it off and let me see, you know, this is how you get it. And, yeah. you know, first impression presentation is very important. And what you put out is what people are going to perceive. Right. You know? Yeah. So that love, yeah. you know, that there's nothing like that old school love. You know, right, I look right. at the owner of this of this company that I'm with, Mr. Walker and his wife. Oh my God, I look at them, they're just the sweetest couple. That's love. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. So, yeah, you have. I mean, you have like. I mean, you have worked with so many people. You have worked with Keisha Cole. I love Keisha. Please tell her yeah, I said she, hi, and I'd like to get a, a interview from her whenever she's available. And, yeah, I will with her crazy self. And um, yes, because I watch her on on um. Love and hip hop. So yes, that's yeah. I love her. She's great. I love her I love music. Her. Yeah. yeah. And um, she's so real and down to earth. You had yeah. um, you had also did some um some touring with Drake and Justin Bieber. And um, let's talk about Drake because a lot of people was like, "Oh my God, please ask him about Drake." When you toured with Drake, how was that? <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. So uh, it was a show I did. With, I remember I did a show. I opened for Drake in Texas, in, in Houston, Texas. Okay. That moment changed my life. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say this. Dude, I saw, I'll just say it like this. When I saw the transaction between Drake and the promoter of how much he got paid to perform for 25 minutes, it literally changed my entire life because I could not understand because when I performed and I got paid too, and it, and it was a cool number, you know, it was, it, I, I'm not mad, mm -hmm. you know, but I sweated out my clothes mm -hmm. and, and I had a wardrobe change. I had a whole band behind me. I had dancers, I had horns and strings and I had the whole shebang, but Drake got up. This dude performed <laughs> for 25 minutes. <laughs> and I'll say this. I'll say this. What he made, he made millions of dollars in 25 minutes. Oh, I believe minutes. it. <laughs> it was literally, he made, it was a, it was a very, it was a very, very, very uh, pretty penny that he made in <laughs> one night. And, and, and I watched it. I, the details, I can't even say on air, but it 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 i it it changed my whole perspective on the word hustle i was like really wow okay so you know what i mean and and i'm i'm a hard worker i i've always been taught that you know if you ain't sweating you ain't working oh boy you, know? you can sleep when you dead huh you know what <laughs> and that's exactly my perspective i my whole perspective changed cuz i was like wait a minute he didn't even take his jacket off mm. He got up on the, he got off the plane, came to the stage and got right back off the stage and went back home. Wow. And I, I just could not, I could not. And the crazy thing is he was, he was just getting off tour. So he, it was kind of like a spot date on his off day. I just, I was just blown away. So from that day on, I think that, that, that moment when I saw that, I was like, okay, okay, Gav, <laughs> you know. Well, th th what can you do it better? Changed, huh? It changed everything. Mm -hmm. My whole approach, my whole approach to just business, my whole approach to work ethic, my whole approach to everything changed. It just, it just shifted. You know how you have those moments in life that just, it could be anything. It could be really good or something really bad. Something like it could be if you 
see somebody get shot and die right in front of you. It, something inside of you shifts. You be like, whoa, it's over. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when you see somebody sing, perform for 25 minutes and make millions of dollars, mm -hmm. it, it does something. Something happens. At least it should. Something happened to me. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that it was an amazing. He rocked it. We had a lot of fun. You know, the crowd loved it. It was amazing. I loved it. He's 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 one of the, you know, and then you know, you know, I'm working with Paul Stanley. I do a lot of I've toured toured all over Japan with Paul Stanley from Kiss. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw that picture. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Can Paul you please Stanley tell Paul, Paul Stanley, Stanley that Mocha Myers said <laughs> hey and he need to come I to will. Kansas City yeah. after the pandemic? I will. I mean, it's it's all love. I mean, I mean, listen, hanging out with Paul, flying first class, flying private everywhere we go. We've, we've been all over Cayman Islands. We stayed in, we were in tour Japan for three weeks. Amazing opportunity. I mean, imagine running through the airport with Paul Stanley in Japan. I mean, complete pandemonium. And Paul is such a superstar. You know, he, he makes his whole entourage feel like superstars. And, you know, that's one of my closest friends. He's working on a, uh, a project right now, a a, 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 mo a a tribute to Motown, the Motown sound. Okay. And he brought me on board. Yeah, he brought me on board to help him. It's a passion project, okay. man. So he brought me on board to help him with that. You know what I mean? And and of course, I'm babyface. The long story goes on. The, the, the list goes on and on. But uh, you know, no. I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm really excited for what's to come in like, 2021. You know, I see that you was um in the movie with um Robert De Niro and Bad Grandpa. <laughs> I yeah. love Robert De Niro. What are yeah. you doing yeah. hanging yeah. out with Robert De Niro? <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting because my, my 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 what I had to do was I had to pretend like I couldn't sing, which was one of the <laughs> That's hard. Yeah. Yeah, they were like you have to sing on key. You know, that was my that was what I, you know, my, what I had to do was pretend like I couldn't sing and then slowly start to sound really good. That's what I had to do. Okay. And it was just really interesting. I was like, wow, I never really realized how hard it is to sing off key. This is crazy. Like I, it's, it's, it was weird. You know, it was like running backwards really fast, you know? <laughs> so yeah, it's, yeah, it was, it was interesting for me. Gavin, you was on Jimmy Kimmel. How did you get through Jimmy? Jimmy Kimmel. Oh my God. Me, me and my daughter, well, my daughter, she, she doesn't supposed to watch Jimmy, but every now and again, she'll catch some of it and he's just so crazy. How was that experience with Jimmy Kimmel Live? I just feel so, and I'm gonna tell you something before you answer this question. I woke up in the middle of the night last week and Wendy Williams was interviewing Uncle Charlie. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've so, been interviewed by Wendy. Wendy know, is so, amazing. Yes, I love Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams is the reason I do what I do. Wow. She yeah, is. I, I, yeah, I've sat with Wendy before. She's phenomenal. She's amazing. She's amazing. Yeah, she's amazing at what she does, and she does it well, you know. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, Jimmy Kimmel was, a, was an amazing experience, uh, a super hospitable. Uh, I was on there with Keisha. Uh, and 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 we, yeah. we had we had a blast. We were on there singing her sing uh, her two singles, and we murdered it. The, the crowd went bananas, and you know Keisha, Keisha's family. So anytime Keisha calls me, I'm there. You know I've been knowing right. Keisha since I've been knowing Keisha since 2001. So we've been family since then. You coming you know, home like for the holidays cousin. though? I know you got Am the I family the up there, but you are know, you coming you know home you know for what? the holidays? You know you know what I'm gonna tell you this. I will be home in 2021 real soon. I don't want everybody to know when, but I will be there. You know. <laughs> well, you know, you better get in contact with me when you come. I so. will. I will. I definitely let you know. You know now, I, I gotta ask for the people of KC. When you worked with Stevie Wonder, what did you do? How was that feeling? Wow. Was you shaking? You know what? Was you stuttering? <laughs> <laughs> was you? Oh, the, the, <laughs> couldn't hit that no, couldn't hit that tone. I'll tell you this, I was super, super nervous because what it was was Stevie uh Stevie asked me to perform at his birthday party and I was and I'm sitting here thinking, 
I mean, I, when I walked in, it was Johnny Gill. It was Usher over here. It was Janelle Monet. That's shout out to Janelle. Shout out to uh, Janelle. Ty, yeah, Tyrese. I mean, everybody you could possibly imagine. All of these people are my peers. They're all my close friends. But I, 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 I thought that they all were going to perform too. No, I was the only one that performed. Are you serious? I was the only one that performed, and he specially requested Superstition. Oh, so Gavin. I was like, whoa! So I was. That's when I was like, really, like, oh my god! I hope I don't mess up. Lord, do I know the words? Like, just give me I the first the line real quick. <laughs> Come so on, Superstition. Yeah. Come Very on. Superstition. Hey. Right hands on the wall. Bum, 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 bum. Very superstitious. Hey. You know the ladder's about to fall. Boy, uh, you ain't lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So Stevie loved it. The crowd went bananas and we had a blast. But I was just like, I was like, wow, this is crazy. I'm the only one. I'm the only one that he asked to perform at his birthday. It's like wow, this is it's, it's, it was an honor. It was, it was I mean, and it, it was star studded. You can imagine, right in the heart of Hollywood, Stevie Wonder's birthday party, and I'm the only one that was asked. Mm, 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 mm. You so know, I was that really, was a I blessing. Was really, I was really blown away by that. Have you ever worked? With, I was humbled by. That. Have you ever worked with Kim? Have you ever, or even thought about working with Kim? Kim, you know what? I've been told. I've been <laughs> people. You're not the first one to say that. I've, I've been people have so that must be some confirmation there yeah yeah it is there's something to that because i'm like wait a minute what made her say that yeah i've been asked that before <laughs> okay so maybe that must be something you need to probably take in you know out an adventure one yeah i'm gonna look into that <laughs> yeah do that now um i had i had um you know read about your you know i mean god your life is just so amazing all the way to doing the voices on proud family on the disney channel my daughter she's 10 years old and she loves proud family now yeah. how did you get into doing the animation you're just a man of of, of many faces and many talents <laughs> well the cool thing about proud family well i'll say this you know honestly when it came to doing most of my acting opportunities, whether it was Honey with Jessica Alba or, or, or Dirty Grandpa with, with Robert De Niro or Proud Family, uh, most of those opportunities came from me just being an artist. Like just, you know, you know, when you get into one thing, it opens up another door for you to do something else. Right. Like, I mean, I've been really blessed to get into modeling and acting and all these different things, but it, it, it those doors really swung open due to my, my impact in music you know so yes. you know I, I mean you know because when you when you're when you're when you're leaving an imprint on music then what happens is you know when it comes to to acting or voiceovers you don't even have to uh you don't have to audition most of the time you just you know like like proud family they made that whole episode about my group the whole episode was oh, so really? we were acting out ourselves so okay it was a really cool yeah it was a really cool episode so I mean, we didn't have to audition because we right. just we were just You're playing ourselves. Yourself. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So you didn't done, done some stuff with my boy LL Cool J, Tyrese. Oh, big bro. What you That's doing hanging out right with there. LL Cool J? LL L Cool bro. J is hard as hell. <laughs> LL Cool yeah. J, no, he has put his name on the map for sure yeah. to go down in history. He's one of the coolest guys ever. Coolest guy ever. Like he's one of those kind of guys when you meet him, he just he 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 treats you like he already knows you. Instantly. Like with the second he meets you, you got a nickname. It's instant. So what's Gav. yours? What's yours? <laughs> he called me Gav. He called you Gav. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Gav. What's up, man? I mean, Diane Warren, you know, one of she's she's a prolific, undeniable, one of the world's biggest songwriters, and she's won Globe Awards, Golden Globe Awards every year. Mm -hmm. She introduced me and LL to each other, and LL Gavin, Gavin LL, and Gav, what's up? I was like, wow, what's up, man? Like, <laughs> and I was like, instantly, he, you know, little bro, little bro, he gave me his number, call me anytime you want to kick it, bro, like. Awesome guy, man. Phenomenal guy. So I mean, well, I mean, you went from music to 
to acting to voice animation have you ever thought about maybe working with tyler perry that is ironic that you said that <laughs> i just got a call from from uh tyler perry studios today god is good high five that is crazy Come that on, you high, i mean literally high five good uh, pal. <laughs> Like, like literally as I was on my way here to the studio just now, before I hopped on the call with you, I was just on the phone, on the phone with Tyler Perry's, uh, music supervisor, mm -hmm. uh, for, for his show. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, uh, you'll be looking, you'll be hearing my music on his shows. So okay. that's going to be phenomenal. Uh, okay. I'm going to definitely be looking for that. I, yeah. um, Yes, and you know you're going to have to keep me in tune for that, and we're definitely going to have to do another interview and give that to Kansas yeah. City so they'll know what's really going on, and you won't be yeah. just coming to Kansas City to open up for some our festivals here in Kansas City. Yeah, yeah, because you know I got the gap band, so we would love to We would love to, to headline or even just open for anybody. You know, we got we – can, we can do whatever. And, you know, I got you – know, you, know, you know how some people may not – the budgets may not be – you know, uh, the way, the way, the way is the way it's conducive to the gap band. So they, it may not be conducive to the gap band, but you know, I have another band that does exactly what the gap band does in case they can't afford the gap band. It's amazing. I mean, it's the same exact thing, same song, same, everything, same arrangement, different name, but it's phenomenal. I mean, we leave a, we, we do it all every year for, uh, here for the city of Carson in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were asked to do Manhattan, Kansas this year. We had a few shows lined up for Kansas okay. city this year. Due to COVID, it got shut down. So I'm looking forward to coming to Kansas City and bringing the Gap Band out. You know, I think it'll yeah. be phenomenal. That's, I, I'm looking forward to it too. I'm gonna be right there, friends. Well, I'm gonna be backstage. Honey. I don't yes. know about everybody else. I'm gonna be backstage watching that one because I'm gonna have to <laughs> yeah, sit yeah. down. Yeah, I know you gotta be backstage. Yes. I gotta have you backstage. Yes. <laughs> I got five minutes left, Gavin. I want my birthday song. You know, my birthday was yesterday. <laughs> I had my Creole, I had my my good Cajun Creole food because I'm I'm Creole. Had some shrimp yeah. with some sausage and some. Shout out to Trisha Rushing Swamp, good swamp food from RushingFoods.com. You gotta check it out. Oh, it was amazing. Did, you, did they get your cake? I did not get my cake. Ah, uh, I was like, she needs a cake with your name on it. I know. I'm still celebrating. <laughs> I, I got a few more days to celebrate. I always get shorted when it's the holiday. You know, you got Thanksgiving, you got, you know, Christmas. But you know what? I'm like, I got this big interview to do, and this can this can be, you know, one of the best birthday gifts ever. You know, but I'm on my song. Yeah, I know. I got Come you. On. I got you. I we got four minutes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mocha. Happy birthday to you. You more and many more. Oh, thank you. Know, I, I'll you. give you my virtual hug now. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna let you get back in the studio. Thank you for doing yes. this for me, and th thank you for doing this for Kansas City. I just want to let everybody know that I am the first person to interview the lead singer of the Gap Band. K U A W hey. before anybody else in Kansas City. And hey. I love you for that. And you make sure that you have a, a safe and a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. Love you, boo. I'll Lo hit you when I touch down. All right. Love you too. Love you more. All right, baby. Ciao. Bye. Bye. KUAW Radio, Kansas City's global community radio station. We don't only bring you videos on Facebook and YouTube, but listen to our audio only where you'll get shows like Cheryl Underwood and Blues Time in the City. You can pick us up at www.kuaw.org.